what is up youtube welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless you're a hater because you know they exist my hair was curled so cute yes this is this is my natural hair i decided to let her breathe i thought she couldn't make it out here in this houston weather but i found that she cannot i tried to blow dry her out put a little curl to her but girl she fought back baby she fought back hard and strong so i'm just gonna let her do what she want to do at this point she got it until i stuff up under some braids or another wig see that's why i keep her in the dungeon i keep her in the cellar because she don't act right when i bring her up i'm so nervous to do today's story just because it's a story out of south africa and child i don't want to butcher all of these names and words that are not english but i butcher english words so girl who are we really kidding here but shout out to my south african supporters because y'all be deep in the comments and on instagram like it's a lot of y'all and i wanted because some of y'all have asked me like can you do a story from africa and i'm like girl let me try to find one and i have i found a lot of them actually girl what y'all be over there doing i do feel a little bit of pressure honestly but i'm excited to do it so let's just get into it so the very first thing that i'm scared that i might not get right is this man's name but i think it's right Today's story, my friends, is about a man by the name of Elifasi Msomi. There was not a whole lot about his childhood available online. I don't know if it's because he was born in 1910 or the fact that I'm an American all up in the South African business. But due to one of the two facts, child, I could not find a whole lot about what his home life was. But I did find a little bit about his background, which is quite interesting and relevant to what all went down. Elifasi was a Zulu tribesman born in 1910, and I could not find his specific birthday. So somebody's sign is getting a break today, but I feel like he's giving strong Virgo vibes. Anywho, from the time he was very young, he showed a lot of interest in the shamanic traditions of the Zulu culture. He always had dreams of becoming a Sangoma, which is a shaman or like a witch doctor. That was what he wanted to be. That was the goal, always. Now, traditionally, Sangomas in South Africa are responsible for a whole lot of duties. They are very important to the community. Whether you need mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual healing, they diagnose you, prescribe medicines, they do herbal healing. They're also historically responsible for the transmission of like the history of the people down to the younger generations to make sure that they are informed of where they came from. Something else that they do is concoct potions and spells to ward off evil spirits. They are very highly regarded within the community. And the thing is, God is very much present, but it is the belief that he is not directly involved in human affairs because I guess we ain't that important. But they're like God little helpers so instead of him getting in the mix and little trivial things that we go through he delegates these responsibilities to the ancestors who are in fact very involved in the land of the living the ancestors look out for their living loved ones and they are also very much responsible for punishing you when you up here acting a fool back in this era i don't know if it's still the same but around this time it was believed that like when people got sick it was them being punished by the ancestors for doing something they should not have been doing and so if that was the case you would then go to a sangoma or a shaman because they have this direct line of communication to the ancestors they use that as a means to do their work so if you've been punished with an illness you would then go to a sangoma they would get in touch with your ancestors find out exactly what you did to deserve this a ritual is performed and you are to promise that you will never do it again if they saw fit or if you're lucky then you know you'll be healed now this is completely separate from witchcraft and witchery it is not seen as the same they actually existed independently people actually saw out sangomas frequently for protection against like witchcraft when somebody to go down to a witch and say a girl and try to get a spell put on you and your edges and you need that spell knocked off you will go see a sangoma to get cleansed the zulu people also believed in another entity the tokoloshe now the tokoloshe is described as this very tiny hairy little nasty little beast his description really depends on the region that you're in but since we in south africa today he's small because I know over in Zimbabwe, he is like Sasquatch and huge. Not down here where we at today, South Africa. He's small. He is not cute at all. Very, very much ugly. He's typically invisible, but he has the ability to materialize at any moment and show himself to you. The Tokoloshe has these glowing red eyes, this raspy voice, 
and apparently stinks like hell. And the thing is, it's commonly believed they smell so bad because it's really the stench of dead decomposing sangomas that have tried to interfere and stop his flow. He is half human, half animal, and evil of course. What a lot of people would refer to as a spiritual parasite. So sis got a lot going on. He is so feared that many people used to raise their beds really high off the ground, like put them on cinder blocks because they either did not want him to be able to reach the bed and get them while they were asleep, or they wanted to be able to see underneath their bed at all times because that's where sis like to dwell. A lot of people are so afraid of him that they won't even say the name in fear of like summoning him, which hopefully that's not a thing because I've said Tokoloshe like 41, 42 times now. They are completely trifling little beings, okay? They also like to sexually assault people. They also abduct children. They like to scratch children in their sleep. The little babies will wake up with all kinds of long scratches all on their arm. Don't know where they came from. It also has to feed on the energy of people. And sometimes if it was gracious, it will come on and suck you just a little bit. But if it fed on you for too long, it literally would kill you. But it does not only show up to feed. It will also appear before you and make a request or give you a proposition. And if you decline it, there could be a number of different consequences for doing so. Now, this being a very wide known belief, a lot of people would blame things that they had done on the Tokoloshe. Thievery, assault, and even killing. They would claim to have seen the Tokoloshe and been told that they needed to do this in order to keep their lives. And so they had no other choice. And many times they were actually successful in evading their punishment by convincing authorities that the Tokoloshe made them do it. And this is something that has happened relatively recent to today. In 2005, this man stabbed a two-year-old 38 times. His defense was that he believed the toddler to be a Tokoloshe. He was actually successful in convincing them that he truly believed this and that is the only reason that he did what he did. He was not let off completely but he was let off pretty easily. He only got seven years for culpable homicide. Now being a Sangoma it takes a lot of training. It takes a whole lot of knowledge and a whole lot of skill that you just already had to have had some of. The process of becoming one is super complicated, but Elifasi was completely committed to going through the initiation process as well as the extensive training process. So he is elated when he is granted the opportunity to begin training underneath the elder Sangomas. Now, unfortunately for little Elifasi, child, it goes left for him in the beginning. The initiation process, he didn't even get through that. That is literally the very beginning of the process. Not only is he denied the opportunity to become a Sangoma, he is shunned by all of the elder Sangomas and the community. Now, he is apparently denied the opportunity to become one because very early in the initiation process, they saw a darkness within him and they felt like he was destined to follow a dark path. And so they didn't want to instill all of this good knowledge, wisdom, spirituality, and all of the things, give him, you know, the phone number to the ancestors. And he was just going to get it and cut up and use everything they taught him for evil. Having gone from being on his way to becoming one of the most respected members of the community to being shunned by them just all together he was not happy about this at all but allegedly he does not give up the dream of becoming one he goes to visit a sangoma somewhere else for guidance but when he gets there he finds the tokoloshe instead the Tokoloshe appears before him because he wants something particular and he makes his request very plain and clear. You are to get me the blood of 15 people and first I want the blood of a girl. Now Elifasi claims to have known better than to deny the request of a Tokoloshe and so he feels like he is just obligated now to fulfill this request. Furthermore, the Tokoloshe is right with him. He is going to be there while he goes and collects these 15 people. He makes the promise to deliver and then he and the Tokoloshe together set off to find his first victim. In August of 1953, Elifasi captures, assaults, and stabs a teenage girl right in the presence of his girlfriend. Now his girlfriend is mortified by this. 
but he tells her that the Tokoloshe made him do it in order to keep his own life and if she wanted to keep her life then she would keep this a secret. She then watches in silence completely terrified as he drains the blood from the young girl's body and puts it in a jar telling her that it would later be used in medicine. After seeing him do this she don't listen to him she goes straight to the police. She don't pass go or collect $200. She tells them everything that she had seen and everything that she had heard. They quickly find him, arrest him, throw him in jail, and he is to sit there and wait for his trial date. But unbeknownst to them, he is not in the cell alone. And he had all of the help from the Tokoloshe. Somehow in the middle of the night, he escapes from his jail cell, returning to KwaZulu, his little hometown, to claim victim number two. Now he claims that the Tokoloshe gave him the power to leap like a leopard and run like a gazelle away from the jail. Believing that blood from those uncorrupted by sex and seeing drugs and alcohol and all of the things was better for medicine because it was pure and it was untainted, he decides to target children. He manages to get his crummy little hands on five children before they capture him yet again. This case gains a lot of media attention and it especially grabs the attention of the media once he manages to escape again. And yet again, he credits the Tokoloshe for his ability to escape. He claimed that this time it just simply unlocked all of the doors for him and he just simply walked straight out of there. Now, of course, after his second escape, he is still on the mission to satisfy the request of the Tokoloshe and he is successful in doing so. He takes an axe and within one month goes and takes the lives of nine men and women. Now the authorities have been finding the bodies of his victims and they knew that this was all the work of Elifasi Msomi because all of his victims showed signs of ritualistic behavior and they of course had been drained of their blood just like the six that they knew he was responsible for before. They just had to find him. Unfortunately for him, the Tokoloshe could not keep him from getting arrested because shortly after claiming his 15th victim child, they find him and arrest him again. But this time he is not arrested for his crimes. He's actually arrested for theft. Call stealing. Initially, the arresting officers didn't even recognize him. They didn't know that he was Elifasti. They didn't know that he was at all connected to these 15 victims. It wasn't until they began searching his belongings and found a jar of blood amongst his things. And they were like, wait a minute. You've been out here doing more than stealing, sir. When they accuse him, he does not try to lie about it at all. I guess he figured he probably couldn't. He actually volunteers to assist them finding some of the remains. And afterward, he is hauled off to a little jail cell. Now, they knew him for his works by this time. They knew he liked to pull a nasty little disappearing act. And so they put guards on him to watch him 24-7 until his trial date. That first night in his jail cell, the guard is noticing this. This is doing something a little weird. He is making room on his little bed as if somebody is going to get in bed and join him. But there is nobody there in the jail cell but him. Now, when the guard asks him what he's doing, he tells the guard that he is making room for a friend. The guard is like, baby, there's no one there. And he motions toward this unseen being and says, it's a friend. I know the guard had to be thinking, babe, they do not pay me enough for this. Because that's what I would have been thinking. During Elifasi Msomi's trial, he gets up there and he tells the courts that he is completely under the influence of the Togoloshe at the time that he committed all of these crimes. Except the stealing. That was all him. He tells them how the Tokoloshe had appeared before him requesting or demanding the blood of 15 victims or he himself would be killed and how the Tokoloshe had accompanied him throughout every one of his killings, helping him along the entire way by luring the victims to him and also helping him to escape prison or escape jail in order to complete the mission. Granted, this is something that is believed to have been possible. Two psychologists got up there and said, baby, this is not the case with him. We don't believe it. They said that Elifasi had a much higher than the average intelligence and that he pretty much was just using this as a scapegoat to escape his punishment. 
After evaluating him, they actually determined that he got sexual pleasure from committing these crimes and that that was the driving force or one of the driving forces behind him continuing to do so. The other thing that drove him to his spree was his failed attempt at becoming a Sangoma and him being shunned by the community. They felt like all of this pushed him over the edge and just sent him on a rampage taking his anger out on these 15 innocent people and i believe that is the case as well that's my theory even if said tokoloshe is the thing i don't think he was involved in this in the end of his trial the courts actually agree or side with the psychologist and he is ultimately sentenced to death by hanging on february 10th 1956 elifasi msomi was executed child they returned him to sender Many of the legit Sangomas and Zulu chiefs, they attended his execution child and they were happy to see him go. His spree helped perpetuate this negative perception of their practice and their religion and they didn't like that. It's kind of like voodoo, how a lot of people have a negative perception and you know, belief about voodoo when they don't really know exactly what it is and what it's about. There were actually people before Elifasi and there have been people since him that have practiced practiced and studied to become a Sangoma and then turn around and use their powers for bad. People who made it through the entire initiation and training process and then decided to cut a sharp left at the end. Now I told y'all my stepdad is from Kenya and from what I read the Tokoloshe is not just a South African thing. I'm about to call him on three-way and see what he got to say about the Tokoloshe. Y'all be quiet don't say nothing. Hopefully he don't say nothing too crazy because y'all saw how crazy my mom talks. When I call her in a video. Hello? You must be busy. You must be at work. You sound a professional. Yeah, yeah. Okay, question. Are you familiar with a tokoloshe? What is that? Oh, you don't know. So you young Africans don't be knowing. All right. What is it? Just, you, maybe you're pronouncing it incorrectly. I can read. I'm pronouncing it right. It's tokoloshe or tokoloshi. One of the two. Where, for origin, please. It's a couple of countries in Africa. I know uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa, and I know you're from Kenya, and that's not close. But it's a, it's a couple of countries that know about it. Spell it. T-O-K-O-L-O-S-H-E. L-O-S-H-E. Sorry. No, I don't know no shit about this. This one sounds like South African Zulu. Zulu and Kosa. Oh, you're right. It is from Zulu. Like, yeah, look at yeah. you. I guess you young Africans know a little bit. All right. It's, yeah, it's, it's a Zulu. I thought you had a, yeah. little, a little inside yeah. scoop for me. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll ask a friend of mine who's South African if they have inside so, so that they can share. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Y'all see how out of touch he is with his people? They came over here and just forgot where he came from. That is pretty much it for the story of Elifasi Msomi and all of the BS that he brought to South Africa, all the shenanigans he was up to, which I believe he was up to all on his own. No help. How he was escaping from prison? I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before I get up out of here. A lot of y'all asked me how Texas is going. Are the girls still being nice in the building? Yes, they are. It's so crazy. Like, Everything is going fine. I love it here. My neighbors are no longer being jerks all the time. Granted, I still have not seen any of those people from the first batch who were just complete jerks. But everybody else that I've encountered since, like, they have been extremely nice. It's been a pleasant experience. And so everything is going well with that. I feel like the year is going by so fast. I planned this trip to Hawaii in August for my older sister's birthday. And because I just felt like at the time I was going through it during this move. And I was like, I'm going to need a vacation. And around this time in August is going to be the perfect time. Because that will have given me like enough time to just settle in. So I'm extremely excited about that. I have never been to Hawaii. Hawaii. I think that's how they say it. Child, that's how they say it on TikTok, Hawaii. Just to give you guys a little bit of, you know, update insight on what's going on with me and my life. But I also want to say to y'all, my community here is so positive and people come here and they notice, child. Other YouTubers come here and notice how positive y'all are, not just to me in the comment section, but to each other. And I love to see it, especially to one another. I have come late to my comment section and seen where somebody said like they were sick or in the hospital or just going through something and they appreciate the videos, which y'all just 
just makes my heart smile. Then I got a comment and like three, four other people then I already gave them uplifting, positive words of encouragement. And I just genuinely, it's like one of my favorite things about this whole thing. Y'all are super positive. I don't know if y'all realize that, but when I go to other people's comment sections, cause one person in particular, be loves life, if you know who she is. If you go look at the comments on her videos, they are ripping that woman apart. And I'm just like, why? Like, why come here to someone's channel and just be nasty, so nasty and so rude? And so I just want to say that I greatly appreciate y'all for real, especially those of y'all who keep the same energy in other people's comment section in regards to me. I appreciate it so much. Yes, I saw the pinned comment. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you don't know, but I had actually highlighted the pin comment in my response to her. She DM'd me on Instagram and told me like people, you know, were pointing it out and all of that. And she didn't want me to feel like she just swooped in and took something that was my thing. And honey, as soon as I saw her comment, I already knew what the girls were going to give. They were going to be like, she said you inspire her. She stole from you. You're the queen of true crime. When in actuality, neither one of us were first to do true crime and makeup but she did inspire me to do it so i've always credited her as my inspiration because in my mind and a lot of people don't agree with this because i had a hair video once and i was just like oh so and so inspired me to do this style and people came for me they were like she didn't invent that and it's like to give somebody credit for inspiring you is not saying they invented it or were the first to do it which is why in my very first video that i did i said hey as far as i know at this time she is the only person that does it. And of course, people came for me then saying XYZ did it first, smaller channels did it first. And honey, people do not play about credit in these YouTube streets. I understand, honestly, I do. And I know some people will not agree with my point of view of this whole thing, but at the end of the day, I am a fan of hers and I saw where people came out attacking her saying, you didn't start this whole thing, you stole this from smaller YouTubers. Then they came out and said that she stole her theme song from The Simple Life. Just attacking her from stealing. But we are all truly inspired by somebody. And so I never want to be the reason that somebody is being attacked for something. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, child, what is meant for me, I'm going to have. And so whether or not anybody shouts me out or shows me any kind of recognition or love or anything, like it honestly, truly just does not matter to me. I'm going to continue to move the way that I move, continue to uplift and shout out the YouTubers that I see coming behind me, support the people that I've always supported, and just do me. Shout out to all of my beautiful, wonderful subscribers from South Africa. I love y'all. I love all of y'all, period, wherever you at, whatever little soil you're standing on. I love you for supporting me, being here with me, putting up with me. I hope that I did not butcher too much of, you know, the words and y'all hope nobody is offended because of course that is never my intent y'all want to get my tragus pierced i want to go get my tragus pierced but i'm so scared y'all already scared me out of getting the date piercing on instagram so that's no longer a thing i definitely want to get my tragus pierced and if i decide to we gonna do it on instagram live don't worry my people who don't have instagram if i do i'll screen record it upload it here and y'all keep telling me it does not hurt don't be scared it doesn't hurt i was talking to my bald-headed sister yesterday and she was like are you sure you want to do that that's a lot of cartilage and i'm like i don't know i'm literally like this like pinching it like i don't know and then this heifer goes we'll just do it i got both of mine done it didn't hurt first of all girl we ain't and second of all you just told me that that's a lot of cartilage. Like that's a lot to handle. So I don't even know if I can trust you at this point that it doesn't hurt. I don't believe anybody that anything doesn't hurt. This second haul almost took me out the game. I've been wanting it for so long. I'm definitely gonna do it. I don't know if I'm gonna do it Friday or Saturday, but whatever the case, I'll let y'all know over on Instagram which day I decide to do it. I'm so scared, oh my God, I'm scared. As always, I appreciate you all so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. I'm cooking up something in the kitchen that I think you guys will really love. And it is killing me, especially after this video, not to tell y'all what it is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it hush hush because I want to surprise y'all. I want to just drop a trailer for all of the things and you guys be excited. And so just know, because I talk too much and I can't hold my own water, something is coming. Something new and different that I'm excited about. The day, blah, 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 the days, today's. I'm excited to do it, so let's just get into it. I'm a fucking rapper by nature. I don't know why I'm trying to fight it. 
Blue, are you possessed back there? I hope y'all can hear Blue snoring back there, but if you can, child, that's his little contribution to the channel. Y'all say it's both of ours, so there you go. That was not a whole lot about his information, about his information, what? I don't know if it's Tokoloshi or Tokoloshe, but my tongue want to say Tokoloshe. Bars. That sounded like poetry. That he truly believed it, Ugh. simply unlocked all of the doors from him. From him. Child, two psychological two psychologists got up there tokoloshe is an escape is an escape go oh just to give you guys a little clips what's the clips and so i just genuinely want to say to y'all that i greatly appreciate y'all and appreciate appreciate what did i say because that ain't what i want to say to y'all that wasn't even a word